Good morning, everyone. I had to check what time it was. It's still morning, still morning. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for being here today. We are so honored today to be back here at the uh, newly renovated Queens Community House. Thank you so much to Ben and your entire team for literally taking care of families of all ages uh, here uh, in our district, here in the borough of Queens. Um, yay. Stick around, there might be some basketball later or some ping pong. <laughs> but we are. Or some break dancing. Break dancing. <laughs> but we are so honored to welcome back our speaker, Nancy Pelosi, to the borough of Queens. Speaker Pelosi has been to visit us here in Queens many, many times and is no stranger to us. Thank you so much to our elected officials who are here today, Senator Leroy Comrie, <laughs> Assemblywoman Neely Rosick, Borough President Donovan Richards, Senator Ramos was here before and we have a representative from uh, Assemblywoman Kathy Nolan's office. Um, thank you so much, as always, to our hometown heroes, uh, 1199 and the New York State Nurses Association. And thank you again to the Forest Hills Senior Center and all of our staff uh, for hosting today's event. As you know, in August, President Biden signed the House Democrats' historic Inflation Reduction Act into law. This bill will help lower the costs of everyday needs like prescription drugs and lock in lower health care premiums that will save 13 million people an average of $800 a year. The bill also finally, finally allows Medicare to negotiate the price of prescription drugs and make sure that price increases are not hurting our everyday Americans. It also prevents excessive price hikes and caps out-of-pocket costs to $2,000. And we've been here before, and some of us have had these conversations. So I want to say a special thank you to so many of our members in the audience who have advocated for these necessary policy changes over the last few years. Give yourselves a round of applause. As I said, I'm honored to welcome back Speaker Pelosi. You know who she is. You have seen her on TV. You have read and heard about her amazing work. Uh, I don't know how she does it. I think there's two or three Speaker Pelosi's running around the country in heels. But she has been a phenomenal leader in Congress. And this legislation absolutely would not have been possible without her dedication and commitment to the American people. And you s and many of you see the Speaker Pelosi on camera, but I have to tell you off camera, when no one is watching and we're just having internal conversations with our caucus and members, she is constantly talking about protecting and uplifting our seniors and our children and all families. So I'm really appreciative and so honored that she could be here today, here in Queens, to visit some of our families. It's my pleasure to introduce and welcome back Speaker Pelosi for her opening remarks. What an honor it is to, I thought I might have to resort to my mother of five voice in this room. An honor to be here with each and every one of you. I thank Congresswoman Grace Meng for the invitation and for her incredible leadership. And I thank all of you in Queens for sending Grace Meng to the Congress of the United States. As she said, she welcomed me back because she has been very clear about making sure that members of Congress hear from her constituents 
what the priority should be as we go forward in their words so that the solutions relate to their lives. Whatever language it may be, and may, may be over 200 languages uh, in, in the Queens. So it's nice to be with all of you, and I just want to take up with something that the Congresswoman said. She thanked you, and you, we all gave you a hand and yourselves a hand for the work that you did to make our, our success possible with the legislation. I call you our VIPs, our volunteers in policy, our volunteers in politics. With all the maneuvering we try to do internally, we cannot get it done without the outside mobilization. So that was a, a sincere compliment to you and also a, a call to action for where we go forward. This is a call to action today uh, as we talk about health care and today as it relates to our seniors. I'm honored to be here with the uh, uh, Queensboro president, uh, as you acknowledged, Mr. Richards, earlier. Thank you for being with us. And Representative Rossi, thank you from the Assembly, and, and Senator Comrie, as well as Senator Ramos, who was with us earlier. But they would acknowledge that they and we are honored to be here with each and every one of you. And to be here with our panel, to be here, of course, um, uh, ben is going to give gave us a tour. It, it was just a beautiful tour of this fabulous, fabulous facility. It speaks respect for the people that it serves. It shows how infrastructure is social policy in terms of giving people accommodation. I joked when I said break dancing. I could have said, I could have said. Um, ballroom dancing, that happens here too. You can't dance too much, that's kind of my thing, you can't dance. No. But nonetheless, indicative of again, being a place where people come together, feel a sense of community, which has the word unity right in it. Now, again, this is a call to action day for us to make sure people are aware of what is in the legislation that the Congresswoman said. Now, let me just say oh, something about your Congresswoman. She is a respected leader in the Congress of the United States. I know how respected she is in the community, because I've been here. I want you to know how respected in the Congress. A, a member of mighty powerful, I want you to know how respected she is in the Congress a member of the almighty powerful, as we call it, Appropriations Committee. She has been a leader in, in bringing home the bacon. Uh, just to say this, though, recognizing the beautiful diversity of Queens. When I was here once before, we saw diversity, but the thin the diversity. The Asian... And the... Um, uh, Asian Pacific community, as I said, but also the Hispanic community and others. She passed a bill that's called the AAPI Hate Crimes Law. Strongly bipartisan, practically unanimous. I don't think any other member can make a claim that they passed a law in this Congress with that support. But it was because of the respect that we have for Grace Meng the people followed her lead. Also recognizing beautiful diversity, she, she enacted a bill to establish a commission to establish an Asian, Asian Pacific American History and Culture Museum, and that is on its path. These things are things people hoped for for a long time. Now, because of Grace Meng, they are becoming a reality. But that's two specific things that are just current on the ongoing. She has been really a champion. And I like to know, think she, I know that she's inspired by her boys who are growing up now, little, they were little boys when she came. But for the children, when you're for the children, it's about for their families, for their parents, for their grandparents, for the entire family. And that is those kitchen table issues of America's working families that she has been such a champion. So when we talk about the inflation bill, 
the inflation reduction legislation that reduces the cost of prescription drugs by enabling the secretary to negotiate. We've been trying for decades to get that, for decades. The other side just resisted, resisted, resisted. In fact, not one of them voted for it. But with our president, with President Biden, we knew get it to his desk. White keeps going. Uh, that we would or do it this way. That we would be able to have, have it signed into law and have an impact on the kitchen table. Two thousand dollar maximum for seniors on Medicare for their prescription drugs. A giant step forward. Lowering cost of premiums for families. We said $800 a person for a family of four, that's around $3,000. So again, uh, meeting the kitchen table needs to lower cost, create good paying jobs, and have community safety. That's what the bill is about. But for seniors, lowering cost of prescription drugs, having the, um, having the cap of $2,000, this is very, very important. Also, staving off the, uh, uh, the leverage that the other side wants to use to slash Social Security and Medicare because they just don't believe in it. And that's a harsh thing to say, but that's what they are planning uh, for the next Congress. We can't let that happen. Anybody here know anybody who needs insulin? Well, we reduced the cost of insulin from five, six hundred dollars, three hundred dollars even, down to thirty-five dollars a month. And we said to the drug industry, you cannot have any predatory press hikes that exceed inflation. They've, ne they've never had to live by that. So again, at the kitchen table, the price of prescription drugs is a big issue. It's a health issue. It's a financial service, financial health issue as well. And all of this at the same time, we are other family issues like the kitchen table issue as well. came here to listen, and the microphone probably knows that. <laughs> what an honor, as I said, to be with the official family here, uh, all of you, and thank you for your leadership in your communities. But we have some very special guests, Congresswoman, to introduce. I want to say we're to be here with Marcel Darnell, Solomon Green, and the organizations they represent. But let me once again thank Ben uh, for his promises, for his leadership center at this community. Okay, this is the deal, guys. I was the one breaking this in for you. You gotta hold it like this. <laughs> ben, thank you for your leadership and for making this a place so welcoming, so respectful, uh, so meeting the needs of the people of the community. It truly is a model for the nation. And I thank the, thank you for that. Thank you. To our, Sharp elbows, we get things done. Uh, thank you so much, Speaker Pelosi. And we just wanted to introduce and to hear a little bit from our experts who are on the field, uh, on the ground, listening and responding to their members. Uh, these leaders, Marcel, uh, Joanna, Rose, they're not just leaders in their fields. Um, they are on the ground with their members. And while much of the country was able to safely quarantine at home, them and their members were not. They were taking care of our families here in Queens. Queens was really the earliest epicenter of the epicenter during the pandemic. And so whether it's the pandemic or whether it's us facing uh, our senior citizens, um, these three leaders uh, have a, a full 
sense uh, of what their members are facing. So I wanted to to ask them, you know, you and your members have been on the front lines caring for our seniors throughout the pandemic. And as always, if we could give them a round of applause, thank you for your service. And can you describe what the impact of capping out-of-pocket drug costs will be for your patients? And what about capping monthly insulin costs, as the speaker mentioned? Do you have an idea of what this means to your patients and what it will have on them? I want the first one. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you to all the... Congress members, race man. Okay, and uh, Speaker of the House, thank you for us being here, Mr. Thomas, and also the other members. So uh, my name is Rose Green. I'm a nurse at Elmhurst Hospital, the epicenter of the epicenter. And um, I do represent the nurses there also, but when COVID hit, I had to roll up my sleeve, put my scrubs back on, and get back to the ER where I'm from. Um, the capping of medication for these patients, I'm going to tell you, I always say, and at Elmer's Hospital, but throughout the H&H &H system, we always say every patient is a VIP. So what we look at all our patients, having this medication cap, sometimes when they come to the hospital, we, see, we turn back no one at H&H. &H. Everyone is seen regardless of their ability to pay, class, creed, or race. Everyone gets the same treatment. So this is a tremendous help for all these patients that come to our hospital uninsured. And I thank the House of Representatives and also President Biden um, for passing this law. Patient will get the care, the medication they need now because most of our ER, the patients are seen there because they don't have any doctors to go to. So when they come there, they have to get the medicine that we provide for them in the pharmacy when they go outside, they have to pay so much money. So this is helpful, and I thank you for this. And we've been asking for this for decades, as you said, um, Speaker of the House. And finally, this is an historical moment for us. Thank you. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Um, I just say thank you. Um, it's really an honor to be here with so many of our allies. Um, I want to thank you for going through a very tough two years with us. And I see faces of people who really were on the front lines with us. And we are grateful um, for the congressman's help, the speaker's help, for our president, um, for all your support. Um, as Rose mentioned, she's on the front lines. Um, I also work behind the scenes with advocacy. And we are thrilled to be part of this call to action. Um, you know, we're an organi organization of frontline nurses. Um, we work with some of the most marginalized communities. And as Rose can attest, many of the patients in these communities suffer with diabetes and um, deal with severe financial challenges. So the idea that they can get life-saving medication is hugely important. It impacts not just their health, it impacts their communities, it impacts their mental health, um, not having to worry about the costs of medication they so desperately need. Um, and we just feel it's our duty to ensure that patients get equal access to the best care possible. Um, and the Inflation Reduction Act most certainly is an incredible part of ensuring um, access to care for all um, and some of our most vulnerable communities. Good morning. My all and testing one, two, three, much better. Good morning again. My name is Marcel Denall. I am with the Healthcare Education Project. It's a partnership with Greater New York Hospital Association and 1199 SEIU. We are one of the largest healthcare unions throughout New York State. So during the 
pandemic, yes, we were on the front line. There were so many issues. But as I sit here this morning, I think of our home care workers. We represent hospitals. Greater New York represents nursing homes and clinics and also nursing homes, clinics that, um, why am I getting the brain freeze? Because it's emotional. I'll but I am really focused right now, thinking of our home care workers who works the hardest, receive the less pay, and they have to make a decision whether this month they can afford to pay for their insulin, or am I gonna have my lights turned off, or am I gonna be able to um, feed, feed my family? And many of them have two cases per day where they also have to include the expense of taking public transportation to get from one side of Queens to another. So the Inflation Reduction Act, I congratulate the Speaker of the House and her peers and President Biden. This $35 cap will help families be able not only to pay for their medication, but as we all know, when you have a health issue and one part is not taken care of, then there's other areas where there's, that develops that affects one's health. As Joanne mentioned, there's other health components that people can focus on. Insulin, it is a life even medication, and I'm so thrilled that the IRA is passed and it will be in effect to help our families. Thank you so much for the amazing testimonies. And just to give you a glimpse for our congressional district here in Queens, uh, that's over 10,000 people, 10,000 senior citizens who will be able to save thousands of dollars because of this bill. So we are very grateful. Next, I'd like to ask a question of Ben, our host. Now that President Biden has signed this bill into law, we have to ensure implementation is occurring in a manner that is most accessible for our seniors. Something I've been working on with our colleagues in government is more language accessibility in our healthcare system. We are representing the, probably the most diverse county uh, in the country. Here, Queens Community House, uh, your team serves a variety of seniors from all types of background, or, uh, including some who have limited English proficiency. Can you talk about how you and your team help make sure that our seniors have access to the services and the benefits that they need, and are there resources or ways that we should be working to make sure Medicare is accessible to all who qualify? Well, first of all, I just want to thank you, Congresswoman Mang. Thank you, Speaker Pelosi, for uh, joining us here at the Queens Community House today. It means so much to us to have you here. Um, and uh, I, it's, my team has been working uh, for over two years to renovate this center, to get, it, uh, to get it ready for events like this without knowing uh, until quite recently that this event was happening. So it's really a pleasure, <laughs> a pleasure to have you all here. I should also say um, we, we just completed the first phase of the renovation and uh, we, we have upcoming uh, more work to do and I, I commit to having a state-of-the-art sound system as part of the next phase of the renovation. <laughs> um, and, and really want to thank uh, Borough President Richards and, and the other elected officials uh, who, who provided so much of the support necessary for this renovation. Um, Uh, I also want to just echo some of what Marcel said about the impact of the Inflation Reduction Act. We at Queen's Community House, we provide meals at our senior centers, we provide case management services, uh, housing assistance services, we provide uh, home delivered meals for homebound seniors, and we see how much older adults' budgets are pinched every day. And so the same kinds of trade-offs uh, that Marcel was talking about home care workers making, we see our seniors making those trade-offs. 
Um, and certainly, uh, prescription drugs are a really important part of the budget of so many of our, of our seniors. And so as they're struggling to figure out how to make those choices between rent and food, um, the, the control of prescription, prescription drug costs will mean a lot to our homebound seniors. Uh, so we're really grateful for, for that work. Um, regarding language access, um, one of the things that we that we do to, to make it possible for us to serve such a diverse community is is we hire from the community. So we have a lot of diverse staff um, who our staff speaks uh, at least five languages, um, and and then we also you know we we access translation services when we need to. We work with a lot of. Um, there's a lot of great small community-based organizations in Queens that represent uh, the diverse community of Queens. We work with a lot of community partners. Uh, those partnerships are critically important to us provi to providing the services and reaching into the communities that we serve. Uh, and so just really um, appreciate having elected officials here who recognize the importance of community-based organizations and the way that we reach into the communities uh, because that is how we're gonna make services like Medicare more accessible to the diverse communities of Queens. Thank you so much. Uh, ben, um, now we only have time for one more question um, and maybe we'll have uh, the speaker kick it off, but uh, what is the next step? Where do you think we need to go from here to ensure that more Americans get the health care access that they need uh, and deserve. Thank you. Well, uh, again, you think about that, but I'll tell you what your thinking has led us to thus far. Uh, as, as Marcel mentioned, we're talking about the cost to um, seniors for as all had rose, I was honored to be at Elmhurst with the Congresswoman before. Welcome. Nice to be with you here. Thank you, Johanna, for your kind words about the truth of what this cost, lowering cost means to people. And one of the other features that Marcel brought up was of how we treat our health care workers. You all addressed that. So what we want to do next and what we had as part of our uh, our agenda is to have home health funding for home health care where we uh, pay the workers what they deserve we treat them with respect of course in california where we are we want to unionize and I think that's a good way to uh, uh, make sure that we get around with that but this is really important not only for those workers to pay our respect and our pay to them it's about freeing more women to be in the workplace because mostly it's women who are the caregivers at home, some men, but mostly it's women. So if, if they can know that their sibling or their parent or even their child is cared for at home in a very positive, safe way, then we'll have more women in the workplace. And to that end, we want to again have renew, what will expire at the end of this year, the child tax credit because that's really important for the kitchen table to put food on the table and meet families' needs. And we want to have increased funding and opportunity for child care, for child care, the tax credits and the rest for child care. And we want to have um, universal pre-K nationally, universal pre-K. So all of these things are about freeing moms and dads to be clearly and safely in the workplace. Children learning, parents earning. But again, meeting the financial needs of families. Also with that though, a big issue of course is affordable housing. And that is a part of, of our agenda as we go forward. So what we have done thus far is an enormous step forward but it, much more needs to be done in terms of access to care, access to childcare, and the rest. And we do believe that in our other initiatives that the president has put forth, President Biden has been a champion for justice and equity and diversity and inclusiveness, so that this will enable many more people of color to take, whether, whether it's with our education initiatives, our investments in science and research, more broadly to include the diversity of our country, whether it's in our infrastructure bill 
that has um, 60 billion dollars for inclusiveness to say in the, in the past maybe a highway came through a neighborhood and divided it, we're undoing that. We're unifying communities and we're doing so by having the very people affected by it make the decisions associated with it so that the workforce and the leadership and the equity and ownership it comes springs from the community. So it's about fairness, justice, equity, inclusiveness, diverse, recognizing the diversity of our country, which will make us preeminent in the world, continue to make us preeminent in the world. But again, much of it can only happen if we're taking care of the children or our seniors or our people with persons with disabilities in our in our households, in our communities, with all the respect in the world for them and for their, for their caregivers. And one more thing I want to say about the Inflation Reduction Act is it does enable us to provide good paying jobs with diversity in mind by having a large $370 billion to address the climate crisis in a way, in a way that involves the community that involves the community, uh, the air people breathe, environmental justice, how much asthma exists in communities of color that's just an injustice in our country that must be addressed drastically and the legislation does that. So that's a health issue, the air our children breathe, the water they drink. It's a jobs issue, creating good paying green energy jobs. It's a security issue because the competition for uh, habitat and food and the rest can cause a conflict. And it's a moral issue if you believe, as I do, that this is God's creation and we have a moral responsibility to be good, good stewards of it. But even if you don't share that view, we all agree that we have a responsibility to our children to pass on this planet in a responsible way, to pass on this democracy in a strong way, to pass on to kids born now who live into the next century to make sure they're living in a society that has fairness, justice, inclusiveness, respect for diversity and the rest. So that's the path that we're, that we're on and in a few months, a couple months, we hope to be able to implement uh, more of that. The one thing that I would add to that amazing list is just more, more investments in adult education. Here in Queens, the land of immigrants, and in America, a country of immigrants, we at Queens Community House have expanded our adult education program because of funding that came through the Workforce Investment Opportunity Act. We really appreciate the support. The demand in our community for the service is high and growing, and um, we'd love to see more investments in that. Okay, I think oh, for our economy, the economy is a big issue. The best thing that we can do to strengthen and grow our economy is to pass comprehensive immigration reform. Thank you so much, Speaker Pelosi. And I think that's all from our uh, panelists up here. Um, and that concludes our program. Um, so let's everyone give a round of applause. Thank you so much to Speaker Pelosi. Thank you, Ben, and your team. And of course, to our 1199 and nurses' uh, families. Thank you so much.